G'day gamers, Ranger Tony here, back with some more Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition. Let's dive on in. Um, <clears throat> where were we when we last left off? I think we were outside the cave on the beach. Just about to go in, I believe. We'll see. <clears throat> yep. That's exactly where we were. Right. Let's see what it's all about. Interesting, dead orcs in the cave. Why don't I feel more relieved to see so many dead orcs? Because whatever killed them could be around any corner, and we've no idea whether to expect friend or foe. Okay, there's a lightning storm happening right there. Under your socks. That's the biggest static cloud I've ever seen. There's got to be a way to cover up the source. Well, of course there is. Um, hang on. Let's get Rose to come to like here. Because she's got the best telekinesis out of all of us. She can do that without having to head into the cloud. Oh, we've got another bombity bomb thing there. Is there anything around? Oh, look at that. That's sneaky. Hey? <coughs> What's that? Invisible. You can have that. I don't think we've got anything else here we want to use just yet, so let's head over here. Missed that parchment. Beard, what a <clears throat> By order of the All Mother's Chosen One, Gratilda, the sole task of this expedition is to retrieve the Star Stone located in Cyseal's Black Code. Any and all other objectives, meanwhile, postponed and abandoned until the Star Stone is acquired and delivered to Evelyn. A favoured friend of the All Mother. Remember, it's better to brave a lifetime among Sicilian scum than to have failed Gratilda. Okay, so there's a big fight going on up here. Let's go up to that for the moment. Pirate bowmen, but they're all skeletons. Don't you know 
<clears throat> Don't know who's going to be worse. We've got an Orc Elite Trooper, a young Orc Ranger, another Orc Elite Trooper. And an orc shaman back there. And then we got these different skeletal pirates. Well, we want them all dead, I think. None of them are actually, you know, marked as being allies. So we might as well start with... an oil on him and then what have we got? we got 11 explosive arrows so why don't we shoot one of those <coughs> we didn't kill that pirate but he's not doing too good Get you up to there. Living versus the dead. But what in this dank cave could be worth such a savage fight? Regardless, these orcs will find no allies in us. Lost footing is as good as a lost battle. Get them all burning. up there so that you can take on the shaman next turn that's probably a good idea Okay, that was a weird sort of way for him to do that. what I wanted. Now let's... Oh, I don't have enough. Okay. Uh, why don't we do... You're already burning. Let's do that on you. Very good. And then... Let him get away. Beautiful critical hit. Let's get up here for that pirate. danger at the moment. That Orc Shaman's almost dead from fire. So this Pirate Pyromancer is going to be the more dangerous. So what can I do to him? Yeah, let's 
Go big or go home, I think. Use a ricochet. Face the unending darkness. That worked very, very well. Um, and then let's Yeah, let's do a freezing arrow on him. Beautiful. Get the yeah, good. The orc shaman died. That's wonderful. So who we got left? We got a skeletal pirate there, and we got those couple of guys we can't see over that way. Don't really have a lot that I can do. I don't feel. I think that did pretty good. I mean, I could have, I could have attacked him, but my uh, thing up here is all screwed up. Okay. Let's do a crippling blow against this guy. Don't have enough to do anything else. get you to use that on him. Wasn't quite enough to kill him. Okay. Can we... You look a bit under the weather. Freeze him as well. There we go. Attack, get them both in one go. And that's the end. Crossbow there. Was there anything? There was stuff down here at the Shaman. Medium healing potion. Very nice. Ooh, chest there. Sharp Rondel Dagger. G'day, Flagonborn. Thanks for thanks for um, yeah, catching things on YouTube. Sorry, I can't really uh, or haven't been doing times that have been a bit more conducive for you on Twitch. But anyway. So 
What have we got down there? Interesting building amongst the, the ruins. But was there anything we missed over here? I sort of feel like that should be an entrance that we might have been able to get through, but I guess not. There's also this gate here, which leads us down to that. Is that the end? No, Ooh, a dragon skeleton down there. I think we'll go this way first. Ooh. Hold, our enemies have laid a trap. What's the rat going to tell us? We can't talk to him. Okay, so at least we found that trap. Let's just do a quick save. Because you never know. We might end up finding another one or missing one and getting blown to Kingdom Come. Okay. Is there... It doesn't appear... Oh, yes, there is. Right there. Oh, and there's one there too. Let's move that crate over to there. There we go. Uh, let's see. Moonstone. Yeah, put that away there. Let's give that to you. Sharp Rondel. No one's going to want to use that. Put that away. Give you that. Water resistance potion. Let's put that away because we might make a arrow out of that. Let's put that away. The rest of it is just stuff to sell. That. And that. That's what I haven't done yet. I haven't researched what it takes to enchant these special weapons. Uh, but while we're here, you... No... You can cast that. And I no. There we go. I'll cast that. So the problem I s uh huh, yeah, I'm right. The problem that I see down here is that um, for us to block off that one, we are going to have to move this other barrel down in stages. How far can we go? There. And then put it there. Damn it, I got poisoned. Well, that's all right. We can cast that. And that. I really should just like eat some of my food for these guys to do their small heals uh, which one you, you can have some fries too and even you can have some fries I'm really not using those as much as I should. Okay, we've done all of that. Let's... Oh! Oh! That looks... That looks really, really scary. A source abomination. 
when a crab and a man love each other very much. Okay. He is definitely very much a water sign. So, uh, we get an attack of opportunity if we try and move away. So let's not do that. Let's put Spider down behind him to get him flanked. And then you're going, rather than using a full big grease, we're just going to use the little one to oil him up. And then zap him. Don't think set him burning, but... Okay. Midori, let's go for... Or Maddie, whatever your name is. Whoa, your health is really bad, Maddie. But that's fine. We're going to go... Number one. And then we're going to do... Crippling Strike. And then you are going to heal her. And then let's try and freeze him. I don't think it'll work. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's do... Well, let's just hope this doesn't hit my guys as well. No, it didn't. Very good. Uh, okay, now we can do the grease over all of them. And then light it up. There we go. That's what we wanted to do with him. Um, that got rid of all the little baby ones as well. I think we're probably safer just to do that. Um, let's do the crushing fist. Oh, I can't see the target. Of course we can't. Well, then that means that we should throw a grenade of some sort. A firestorm grenade? Yeah, look, if that, if that hurts our spidey, it's no big deal. Damn it, it only really hurt the spidey. Um... I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, I can't see the target. <sighs> That's the only annoying thing about all of that. What about... Stop of strength. What? I didn't say to cast that. Damn it. Um, okay. Buff, buff our damage, and then we are going to use some poison arrows. Very nice, and I think one more. Oh, not enough points. Yep, okay. How is he doing? He's getting pretty low on health. Let's drop another one of these on him. And let's zap him again. Very nice. Okay, let's buff your attacks. 
And we'll try a crippling attack on him. And then another hit as well, because you can afford to. Um, safest just to zap him. Good, that actually did damage him. What about... Okay, small damage, but... Looks like air is better against him than water is. Uh, spider, just get in there and attack. Use a couple more poison arrows. Oh, let's just use a normal arrow for the final shot. And we got him down. Very nice. Ooh, lots of lots of interesting things there. Let's just wait for the fires to stop, and then we'll loot. Okay. over this way. Some fish. Some more arrowheads. Nothing there. Okay, that all leads us down over that way. That's nice. Let's let's investigate up in here first. Oh, I missed those barrels over there. Let's have a look at all these. Okay, apparently I'm carrying too much, so you can have that. Let's put these away. Salved Hard Wooden Club of the Vandal. Okay. Terra Thick Leather Boots of the Thief. Earth Resistance and Pickpocketing. Covering Hard Leather Braces of Initiative. Yes, please. I'll wear them. Uh, and I'm carrying too much, apparently. So, ooh, what was that? Precise incision skill book, scoundrel, okay. Fire wand, fine, water wand. Let's, let's start parceling some of this stuff out to people, I think. To, to carry, rather than... Having me carry it all.
there we go that's a little bit better not hugely better but enough so there is a door there look out get out of there you idiots where's this trap right there and there two explosive mines okay it's not great what sort of psychopath puts explosive mines come on let me talk to the goddamn mouse he's talking about that stuff um now that we know the traps are there i don't think we will trigger them but let's just quick save first because you know as they say knowledge is half the battle and let's quick load because that shouldn't have happened Can we disarm them? No. I thought I had disarming tools. Did I get rid of them? I think I gave them to Wellgraf now that I think about it. Yes, I suspect I might have. Man, we have a lot of junk. So what I'm tempted to do... Oh, why are you in there? How about you... Go and... All go and stand over there while I handle this. Alright. Oh, hum. some bonus loot what we got pumpkin minor healing bread looted that we've looted that we've looted that 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 so what happens if I come around this side and loot that and that and that Come over there, and then we'll go to there. We'll loot that. There we go. We did everything. Tempted to blow those up just to get them out of the way, but whatever. Um... some more food did I give any of you the cups before no I didn't let's just oh, let's keep them here that's all right um, okay there's some stuff that we can do here so let's have a look we can
Let's make all of the flour up. Now, yep, that sounds good. Let's make one of those. And make one of those. Sure, make one of those. shafts. I thought there was... Oh, it was steam clad arrowhead. We ran out of arrowheads. Right. Um... So let's make up the cold fries. Hopefully we'll get a chance to cook them at some point. Um, let's make up some dough as much as we can. There we go. And we'll make the cheese bread dough. And the fish pie doughs. And that's good. If we ever come across a fire, we can make up some more. We better quick save because there's a good chance there's going to be another bomb in here somewhere, I would think. Just uh, have a quick look around myself beforehand, just to be sure. Don't know why we all got XP for that. There's that steam cloud there. That stopped that. These all feel like some sort of trap that's going to go off. Fear me, I am Billigar. I will give you tons of scars. My tricks are known throughout the land. My rhymes rhyme nicely. Understand? <laughs> Billigar. Understood. Can you tell me about yourself? Aha, you wish to know of me? I am the best. Can't you see? Such tricks, such rhyming, the biggest fan of the t tricking, rhyming, t best Belagar man. Yeah, rightio. Sad sap, you stepped into my trap. If you move, this room um, explodes. You'll have to stay till you wither away. Your only hope's a secret button, but since moving will kill you, you can't do nothing. Is the button red, blue, orange? Will you find it? Will you, uh, storage, florange, uh, yeah, whatever. I am Billigar. Ha 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 ha. Don't forget, if you move from that spot, things around here will get mighty hot. Ha <laughs> ha. Too bad you can't find my secret switch without moving from, um, where you're standing. Okay. Well, I can think of a number of ways of getting out of this trap right now without even uh, you know, without even blinking, basically. Um, the easiest one is to come in here. Is it in here? No, it's not. 
Although I feel like I need to rearrange stuff in there. Did we make a bunch of arrows and leave them in here? Or did they automatically get put in our other... No, we did make a bunch of arrows that need to come out of here. Um, you go in there, you go in there. You go in there. You go in there. We have a poison cloud arrowhead. Why can we not make that? Combine that with... Uh, arrowheads. Thank you very much. Very nice. We don't have any other arrowheads. So we'll chuck that in there. Okay, so... Uh, in... No, that was the one I was just in. In here. If I take out one of the teleport pyramids and say give it to Maddie, because Maddie is outside the room and I was uh, fortunate enough. To do that, then I can get out of here. By doing that. From the would be wizards inflict chaos and misery. Any dilettante does his craft ill justice. Oh, what's that the gleam? Novice, Medora, not that which he practices. The other way that I thought of getting out of it was to use the rift travel. Um, so we're just going to wait for that fire to die down and go in and see if there's anything we can loot. It's not as good as it could have been, but I'm sure there is possibly, I'm sure there's probably another way out of it, but it seemed like the simplest solution for me at the time. It's probably something to do with that book on the desk, quite frankly, I would have thought. But maybe not. So we did have that chest blow up, which isn't, you know, great. But at least we got out of that alive. What's in the desk? Just some coin. What have we got? Fun with fluids. Is there anything new in there we haven't learnt yet? Medium constitution potion. Very nice. Oh, okay, that was it. Unidentified elegant cloth armour. Uh, I don't know if any of you can use that. Let's see. Identify the dagger. Tainted rondelle of expertise. Yeah, we'll be selling that. So let's just give that to you to carry. Merchant in the apple tree. Once lived a malicious and greedy merchant to make money. Married a wealthy woman. Uh, after the marriage, strangled and buried her in the garden. Several years passed. Mighty apple tree grew on the spot. Plucked an apple and ate it. Within the minutes he died. They discovered the apples had magical properties contained a rare and deadly poison. Well. Bizarre. But okay. Um, we can probably make another fish pie. Or fish pie dough. Ready to actually cook it once we find a suitable fire. And we have done everything up here, haven't we? So let's... Join everybody back up and let's get over here. A pirate's office? I would have expected 
have to find something rather more exciting inside. With the way this place is rigged, I wouldn't speak so soon. Nice uh, reminder. Quick save. Mm. Nothing really. Hard mail armor. You can carry that. Glowing metal earth staff. You can carry that. You're not going to use it though. But uh, how was that compared to your armor? Garbage. So okay. Uh, no. Swap the lead again. Was that wine? Gold cup. Some empty bottles. Ooh, the Cove Harbour Key. Oh, and look at that night. Don't tell me that's the trigger that stops that from exploding. Bet you it is. Either that or it opens that door. One of the two. So, it's pirate notes. Oh, that gleam? We'll take the painting. No? Can we not take the painting? Oh, so that's what that did. Okay. Did that cause a reaction? Not sure what that's doing, but nothing in the desk. There is a key there. There we go. I wonder what the deal is with these. Are they just like. There's nothing hidden underneath them. that I don't know if we wanted to go down here yet but we've done it what have you got to say for yourself little mouse rat whatever you are be wary of worn levers I saw an Anne pull one once and the effects were truly crippling okay Quick saving there, don't want to run into too much trouble. Look out, I see a trap nearby. Look at the HP on that. There is no way we're getting into that trap, that chest, without doing something about it. Uh, which is why it's probably... Hmm. That wasn't enough to break the chest. What I probably should have done was move the oil barrel over there, then explode it, or use the oil barrel to set off the trap. did nothing to it. The fire is doing nothing to that. Look out. I see a trap nearby. <sighs> Starting to wonder if I should have gone and done more of the area upstairs before doing this and come back and do this area. I don't know. I 
It almost feels like this is sort of the end point. I don't know. Let's let's head back briefly and see what's in the other part of the of the uh, map. So can we get out that door? We can't. Okay, so maybe we do have to go down. Well, unless this latch here is what's unlocking the door. Oh, yeah. Hey, Tony, how's things? Good day, con man. Thanks for the subscription. I'm doing good. How are you doing? other option is that there's another area back over this way we didn't do. Let's have a look at that first. So we did that battle there didn't go through that door over there, but also, uh, did we, I don't know if we've been in here properly, I don't know, because there's a minor healing potion there, so we definitely hadn't done that, so going through the door takes us down that way, but was there anything else around this way, no it wasn't, because that's where we come in up here. Oh, we you're kidding me. I didn't even notice this up here. I'm going to come all the way back to this and click on it. That's all right, Conman. I haven't been streaming much lately, unfortunately. I haven't been uh, between work and not feeling quite uh, up to it. So let's just make sure we've got this waypoint shrine. So this is the Black Cove shrine. That's really nice. We can teleport out to that any time. Well, actually, if we can do that, then we should probably teleport back to town and sell some stuff, shouldn't we? So if we go to, say, Northgate... I am looking forward to Baldur's Gate, but I haven't heard when it was coming out. Not that I'm really sort of focused in t purely on it and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I'm just... When it comes, it comes. Uh, I am looking forward to it. There is definitely that. But there's been a few things that I've been looking forward to. Hunter, you come to the right place you have. I got every style of equipment to fit you from head to foot, if it's a trade you're after. Well, that was worth a pretty, pretty penny or two. Uh, we don't want that. And we can sell that. Oh, no. There we go. And then, what have you got to sell? That, that. I don't think she can afford it if we try and sell that beer. We'll have to sell that to somebody else. Unless we find something we want to purchase from her, but I don't think there is anything. Okay. Sixth. Well, let's hope... Let's hope it uh, does release then. That would be nice.
bought that, we could sell a lot more stuff. Ring of the Thief, Ring of the Serpent. Might buy all of those, not that they're going to cost me all that much. Uh, anything else that I want? That's the juggling oranges. I don't know what that is, but I want it. It feels like I need the shadow essence. Let's do that. Okay, that's all that stuff. I'm going to leave it there for the moment. I'm not going to buy anything more from her or sell anything more to her. Maybe I could sell that. And that. And that. There we go. Yeah, that's my, my only concern I've got with it is that it is early access. Having said that, I streamed a couple of hours ago um, Medieval Dynasty, and it's, you know, alpha. And it was good. You know, I'm, I'm happy with how that game works. I mean, there's some things I'd like to be to see tweaked and stuff like that, but it's not too bad, so... I don't know. I don't really follow publishers and stuff like that, so I don't know whether Larian Studios is well known for releasing things early that end up being really buggy or anything like that. So I don't know. I'm just going to take the chance with that and see what happens. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't have a huge. Uh, yeah, I am a little worried about what it is going to be like. There is no doubt about that. Okay, that's that's locked and we can't get it open. So I guess we are restricted here to going that other way. Whereas, I will probably buy Baldur's Gate 3 as soon as it comes out, because I want to start creating content for it. I want to start doing, you know, build videos and all that sort of stuff. Oh, hang on, there was another way we could have gone that I didn't go. Silly me. It was around here, wasn't it? The problem, the problem is, is that you've got, um, what's his name? Wolf something? FPS? I 
thought there was another way that I missed here. No, there wasn't. The only way to get around to there is to go all the way through that way, and that might be part of doing that. Um, Wolf Hard FPS is it, who does all of those Baldur's Gate videos. So he's done a lot of videos, and that's going to make it hard for anybody else to come out and you know put videos up about builds and things like that. But the thing that when I look at that, what I say is, and no offense to the guy, I mean, he's creating content and that's great, but a lot of what he's creating is supposition. He, to my knowledge, he hasn't actually played the game. Um, all he's doing is basically reviewing what everyone says is what is going to be in the game and also looking at, you know, what the hell? Giant spiders. Giant crabs, I mean. Um, he's looking at the game, but he's also just jumping through the D&D rule books and saying, well, here's what, you know, this character class is and here's what you can do with it. The problem I have with that is that, yeah, sure, he may be right. It may very well be that um, that, that is what those characters will be but if if anyone's seen any of my videos on um pillars of eternity not pillars of eternity pathfinder kingmaker or seen any of my any of the comments on my videos on um pathfinder kingmaker one of the biggest things that comes uh is people going oh no you can't do that or you can't do this in the game because they were looking at the Pathfinder rulebook, which says one thing. Um, and I'm like, well, sure, that's what the rulebook says, but that's not what was put in the, into the game. They modified it to... Um, you know, they had to modify the rules slightly, and, you know, what you've got in the game is what you got in the game. So... Yeah, you see these guys that are making videos already on this is what's going to be in the game, and it's like, it might not be. Um, so that's, yeah, I've, I've watched a few of his videos, but I take a lot of the things that he has said with a grain of salt, because I just know that the chances are they're not going to be the same in the actual game. Like, super, super glad that they're doing um, turn-based. Like, that's just, in my opinion... Well, I've not played Baldur's Gate 2, except for maybe 15 minutes. I bought, I bought Baldur's Gate 2, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. Um, or actually, no, I got it as part... I bought Baldur's Gate... Enhanced Edition, which which came with Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, plus some of the add-ons for 2, on Steam a couple of years ago. Um, I already owned originally a copy of Baldur's Gate, but I wanted to be able to play it through Steam, and the old version that I had was a Windows version of it, blah, blah, blah. So I got all of that, but I said to myself I wasn't going to play Baldur's Gate 2 until I finished Baldur's Gate 1, and then I never finished Baldur's Gate 1, and I still haven't to this day even after playing it when it first came out. Um, and so... Ouch. So, yeah, I... Um, I've played a little bit of it, and the thing that was weird to me, the, like the very first time I looked at Baldur's Gate 2, I went, oh, this is terrible. What have they done to it? Because... They, there was an option in Baldur's Gate 1 that you could turn on, which put like a highlight around the, each of the sprites for the characters. And it made everything look really cartoony and terrible. And that was turned on by default in Baldur's Gate 2. So it went from everything looked, you know, okay for the time frame for Baldur's Gate 1. And then the first time I looked at Baldur's Gate 2, I went, Man, it looks like they took a massive step backwards in the graphics quality on this. What the hell were they thinking? Um, 
So yeah, that was always weird to me. But I did play a little bit of it just to see what it was like and everything. And I went, eh. I still want to finish Baldur's Gate 1 first, but I don't know if I ever will because I've, I've mentioned the problems I have with Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. And the fact that I'm just liking more and more these days, I'm liking... Um, hang on a sec. I'm I'm liking turn-based more than, than real-time with pause. And so I just... I'm not feeling it as much anymore to go back and do Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Yeah, I I just and here and that's the thing, you know, I I went from all of the really old role playing games that I'd played that were computer based. You went from them being turn based, and then you went to real time with pause, and it did seem something interesting at the time. And so I went, yeah, that's not too bad, you know. And then I look back at it now, and I go, no, I'm much. Much better without it. Much prefer to use turn-based. That's that's my wheelhouse. That's what I like doing. So anyway, let's. I just hope that it it's implemented well in Baldur's Gate three. I hope they didn't do you know like like they didn't do what they did with. Pillars of Eternity, not Pillars, Pathfinder Kingmaker, where it's still technically a, a real time with pause. Like, I, I do like the effort that they put into the turn based combat in Pathfinder Kingmaker when they finally released it, but frankly, I think the mod that the amateurs made is better than the mod than the change that, d that the developers made one of the big problems with the change that the developers made is you can attack an opponent before combat actually starts to initiate combat and it does weird things like all of your party members will start preparing their prepared spells or shooting arrows or whatever is their default action for like you know a second before the game catches up and goes, oh, that's right, we're in combat now, aren't we? And it, the, the turn-based combat mod that I was playing for Pathfinder, Kingmaker, it was, if you made any action that was attack, bang, immediately it was into, into the turn-based and everything started from there. Uh, it, it was just much smoother, much better done. So I just hope that Baldur's Gate 3 was actually built from the ground up to be turn-based combat and wasn't originally started as uh, um, real time with pause and then sort of part way through they went you know what everyone's clambering for this to be turn-based let's modify it and then it ends up being a, a crap implementation of turn-based because it it really shouldn't be possible to make a bad turn-based if you build it from scratch to be turn-based so anyway um, let's bash you, and I'm thinking just a, yeah, straight shot, and let's do a zap from you and kill him. Yeah, like, whoever you are that's telling me these things, that's nice to say, but you want to know what? These aren't innocent things. They attacked me. It's not like I sought them out and went, you know what, I'm going to attack these things. can't move there. Okay. Um, sure. Do an ice shot. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I what I've played of Pillars of Eternity, I definitely enjoyed. But for me, part of the problem with Pillars of Eternity is a whole new rule set, which just completely unfamiliar from everything else. They add, they definitely added some interesting ideas into that rule set. There's no doubt about that. Um, but just the 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 confusion of having to work with a completely different rule set and all that sort of stuff just wasn't as enjoyable for me. Um, so that was my problem that I had with Pillars of Eternity. Um, and I haven't, even though I, no, I don't own Pillars of Eternity 2. Yeah, so I haven't actually played their turn base. Oh no, I do own P Pillars of Eternity 2. That's right, and I did briefly have a look at it. And yeah, I was I, I did the first little fight in the ship at the start, and I re really wasn't. That's all I've played of it though, because I was again waiting to finish Pillars of Eternity one, uh, and I really wasn't overly impressed with the the combat in that either. So yeah, I I won't like I don't mind the um this. Uh, Divinity Engine. Um, I don't have a problem with it in general, but there are a couple of little... I can't think what they are, but I know when I was... when I've been playing this, there's a couple of times where I've looked at parts of it and gone, this is really weird um, in the turn-based sort of stuff. So, or just things that didn't quite work. Oh, I suppose the problem I got with this is there are certain... like when you're out and about in the world... In this, when you're not actually in combat, there's no way to pause things short of going into the options menu, and even that I don't think fully pauses. So I, I was just so used to, like, if I see, at the moment, if I see a little animal running around and I want to talk to it, my first reaction is to hit space, to pause everything, so I can click on it, because when they're moving around so much, it's really hard to click on them and to interact with them. But hitting space does nothing. Or it does something different. I can't remember which. But yeah, that's my big um, thing about this engine. Um, so ma hopefully that's not going to be too much of a problem in if they're using the same engine in Baldur's Gate 3. Or if it is going to be a little bit of a problem, there's some way around it or it's not not quite as bad as it is now because yeah, that's that's one of the little things that I find buggy in here is, is that now that we're not in combat... Like, pause doesn't do anything. I can't actually stop time from progressing short of going into the menu. And even then, it doesn't feel like this is stopping time from progressing. Um, because you'll often see if there are little creatures out there, they'll they'll be running around and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah. I hope there's no problems like that in the game. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. No doubt about that. Let's just hope it doesn't disappoint. Okay, so there's obviously something up this way, which looks to be some sort of big bad temple with another puzzle in it. And then there's obviously something around this way. Maybe it's just another entrance to the temple with the big bad puzzle in it. So it might go this way first. I'm sort of... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, let's not miss that. Chance to grab some loot. Oh, more crabs. Yeah, definitely. The highlight button not not highlighting chests is a big thing. Definitely agree with that. Uh, let's do this again. Hey, Pixelette, thanks for the raid. What have you been playing? Uh, no, we won't.
with that one. Can we get enough of that to get those three? Baldur's Gate 1. Ah, uh, yes, the classic. And if you're if you're in if you're in or past Baldur's Gate, you've got further than I ever did in the last how many years is it since that game came out? 20 odd years? I never got past Baldur's Gate. You're slowed. Man, that sucks. Okay, well, if you're slowed... Yeah. Well, I mean, any... Uh, that's why I'm playing this, in a way, is to prep for Baldur's Gate 3, but... Let's try a toxic grenade, shall we? And let's chuck that... over there. Oh, very nice. Although it got me burning, but... You know. I guess I can live with that. Uh, can't do head vice. I can do that, though, to stop you being slowed. There we go. I have Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Never finished Baldur's Gate 1, so I haven't played Baldur's Gate 2. Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2. Haven't finished 1, so I haven't played 2. I now have Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2. Started playing this. So, who knows what's going to happen there. Pathfinder Kingmaker. Haven't finished it yet. Um, there are a few games I have finished. I just wish there was more that I had finished. Uh, not enough action points. Oh, damn it. I wasted my time. Oh, well, no, I didn't. Let's... Uh, five. Never played Tyranny. Um, I'm trying to think. Neverwinter Nights 1. The original campaign in Neverwinter Nights 1 is the, the last... And I only did this three years ago or something. I, fin I played that and finished it. Um, that was the last one that I finished. Well, actually, no. I, I've done three of the modules that I got with Neverwinter Nights. And so I've finished the three modules that I got with that. There's a couple more modules that I've got that I haven't finished there. And then... Um, what was the other one that I was just thinking of that I finished? Oh, um... The... Dragon Run. Is it Dragon Run? Yeah. So I finished. Dragon Run doesn't sound like it's the right name. And then, um, if we go back, like way, way back, I'm showing my age here. No, the um. So what's the game then? Um, let me have a look. No, 
no, Shadow Run Returns. That's what I'm thinking. Shadow Run. Shadow Run Returns. I've done that. Um, but then, if you want to go back far enough, one of the games that I really, really enjoyed from the mid 90s was um, Betrayal at Crondor, which is based on the Raymond E. Feist uh, novels. And that was a really interesting game. Had some really interesting game mechanics in it. Um, and I very much enjoyed that. But, uh, what am I doing here? I need to... I won't let me drop that because I can't see it. So let's drop one on him. Which really didn't seem to do much. I can't see him. I can see him. And yeah, I finished Betrayal at Crondor as well. So that was one of the other games that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and it was actually one of the first ever... And there's heaps of other turn-based RPGs that I played through the 90s that had terrible graphics to them and all that sort of stuff. And, and I got through them. I can't think of any of the names of any off the hand off hand because they were all just sort of so almost cookie cutter the way they were produced. Um, none of them were, you know, the storylines weren't that great and all that sort of stuff. But there was a, well, I won't say there was a lot, but there was probably like three or four that I played at various times. Um, okay, let's buff your weapon and then hit them all, please. Beautiful. That's what we like to do. And then, what can you do that's really going to help? You can't see that, but you can see these two. But there's not a lot that you can do here. I think maybe healing Medora is the way to go. No. I much prefer turn-based to, to real-time with pause. But that's just me. Um. No, I'm enjoying the combat in this. Wow, I am burning, flanked, crippled and poisoned and I'm almost dead wow I didn't even notice that um, how about we drink one of these there we go and that didn't help a hell of a lot because we got attacked at the same time okay let's take him out what and then okay Um, I hate to disappoint you, Pixelit, but it is turn-based combat in Baldur's Gate 3. And it is built by the same people that made Divinity. Um, so it may be using the Divinity engine. Damn it, I meant to get Johan to heal me. No. Um, I can't even shoot. Do I have enough points to drink another potion? I do. Okay.
No, it's it's from what from what I understand, it's turn based. It's not real time with pause or anything like that. Face the unending darkness. Spirits of Rivalon, aid me. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I haven't heard whether there's going to be the option to toggle or not. I've only heard that it's turn-based. So, I don't know. Yeah, that's true, Flagonborn. Um, you know, there there will probably be some real division if you know it's Baldur's Gate three, but it doesn't live up to what a lot of people want it to be. found here. Pirate's Notes. As soon as that blasted dragon withers away, the treasure will be mine once more. Certainly though I fear the bloodstone is having the same effect on those fire-breathing nuisances as it seemed to have on the rest of us. If that's the case, there must be the size of whales by now. Strange, isn't it, that the very thing that made those riches so easy to plunder now makes them impossible to attain. Ah, to ride the waves once more. Me, me, magnificent. Impunes with the power of the bloodstone, making us immune. Uh, how easily golden jewels fall from the hands of the rich when faced with the ship of us until the dragon drove, die off or move. I'll keep to my hidden room, even if a wanderer knew I was hiding beneath his very feet. Only the most intrepid would figure out how to open the door. And if one dared meet me, I'd welcome the opportunity to unleash my wrath on a fresh soul. Mmm. That's not good. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why in all of those games that are basically, you know, real time with pause, but yes, there is an initiative sit system sitting underneath it. The reason why I never played spellcasters in those games was because if you wanted to say, I'm going to cast a spell, particularly anything which has any area of effect, then it was almost impossible to aim them because you could pause the game, you could select that particular character, you could say, okay, now I'm going to cast that spell and I'm going to cast it at this group of creatures, so I'm going to cast it right here. And unless the spell links to a particular target person or opponent, which some of them don't, then, you know, Fireball being the classic example, you try and cast a Fireball, and the problem is you cast it, but that's just queuing up 
your ca that character to cast that spell when it's next available in their turn based on initiative. And so quite often it means that that spell is wasted because by the time they actually get their turn in the initiative order and cast that spell, either the opponents are in the spellcaster's face and the, the fireball goes off behind them or, you know, all the other things. And you, you might like that, but unfortunately that's one of the things that I don't like about... Um, about those games was was that fact and so that's the reason why I don't play spellcasters Yeah, but the problem the problem with trying to anticipate all of that and work out where they're going to be is there's never any indication as to where everybody is in the initiative order. So unless you're like super hyper focused on everything that's happening and pausing and unpausing the game at micro, you know at second intervals and trying to figure it out, it 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 always just was impossible for me. So. I tried several playthroughs of Baldur's Gate that I started where I was going to play some sort of spellcaster, usually, you know, a, a wizard or a sorcerer type, and I just couldn't do it. It was just so frustrating when when any area of effect spell just couldn't get off. And the fact that, you know, I've I've been playing these games for... 30 odd years now I started playing tabletop D&D &D in the late 80s uh, in in high school oh a glass ruby that's what I spotted um, I started playing that with friends in the late 80s and I actually like the progression of the rule books since then so you know back in the early days a wizard a first level wizard could cast two spells per day, full stop. That was it. You picked your two spells, you cast them, and then you were done for the rest of the day until you had the chance to rest and learn, you know, relearn your spells. And it made wizards just so ridiculously underpowered. And like they only had four hit points per level and all that sort of stuff. Um, over the years, that's right, you fell over and you died, you know. Um, over the years, they've gradually added, like, more hit points. So most spellcasters these days have one to six hit points. They added the, the introduction of cantrips into the game. So um, in, like, the Neverwinter Nights series you had cantrips, but you still only had a limited number of cantrips that you could cast per day, which always seemed wrong to me. And so now in the, you know, um, your Pathfinder Kingmakers, you have uh, some cantrips which are completely unlimited and you can just do them till the cows come home, which I think is really nice. Um, to the point where now in D&D &D 5, like the lowest level of damage it used because it used to be that the idea was a cantrip was any little spell that you could use that really couldn't do any damage right so it was basically homebrew rules originally that people brought in and they started coming up with these ideas of little spells you know a light spell a, a globe of light that followed you around for a certain amount of time and all that sort of stuff um and people came up with all these ideas of these tiny little spells that, and the, the one restriction that they put on it was said well no you can have a cantrip you can have these little spells you can cast them as much as you like but you can't do damage with them and people started finding ways around that so you know like there was a a little cantrip which was like a, a bit of telekinesis type stuff where you could move things around it was often called a mage hand or whatever and people started doing things like tripping an opponent in battle so that they you know fell on uh, someone's sword or something like that all these sort of little things 
And eventually they said, okay, we'll, we'll give you some really low level damage spells. So in Neverwinter Nights 1 and 2, you've got those little spells. They do, you know, one to three points of damage. But you still only had a limited number of uses to them. Now, Pathfinder Kingmaker, we see cantrips that you can use as often as you want. Still do low amounts of damage. You look at D&D &D 5, though, um, which is what Baldur's Gate is going to be, Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be on. It's what Solar Star Crown of the Magistar is based on. And their cantrips, which they can cast all day long, are doing 1d6 or even 1d8 points of damage. Um, and it certainly makes it more enjoyable to play a mage like that. It makes them a little bit more powerful when they start off because um, it gives them something to do every round of combat rather than just stand in the background and, and watch and wait for that right moment to cast their one magic missile for the day. And incidentally, that's why a lot of a lot of the um, early computer role-playing games that I played, Dark Sun was another one, the whole Dark Sun rule set. Um, there was a Dark Sun role -play, uh, computer role-playing game I finished uh, in the mid-90s as well. Um a lot of those games, you didn't start at first level. You had to start at like third or fourth or fifth level because any, particularly spellcasters, were just garbage before that. And some of the adventures were just that hard that they wanted you to start at a higher level. Um, anyway, I'm rambling. I've got a chalky switch here, but I'm conscious that this may be a trap or dangerous. So I'm going to save first and we're going to click it. What did that do? That summoned an armoured swordsman. Just the one? That's all we got to worry about? I know this is stupid, but this is my chance to... Yeah, but you know what one of the, the the really hard parts about Baldur's Gate 2 is, starting at level 9? I like playing ranged characters. So I built a ranged character and started Baldur's Gate 2. I basically rebuilt the character that I had, which was a an archery ranger. So there was an, there's an archer subclass of ranger in Baldur's Gate 1. So I built that character in Baldur's Gate 2 and absolutely useless because they don't give you, you, you don't start with a bow for some unknown reason. You know, you, know, you do start the game, but like, it's just, I played it and I'm just like, I'm, I'm struggling in every single battle. It, it, I, I really, I didn't enjoy that start. Um, it, it felt really weird to me. Super, super hard. At least that's what it felt. Can't see target. Let's dance to death. And you can't see target. Oh, no question there. And there is talk that Minsk and... Well, Minsk anyway, maybe not Boo, but Minsk may be in Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not going to... I don't know that he definitely will be, but there, are, there is a, a rumour that he may be in Baldur's Gate 3. Ha! 
and that no that's despite the fact that it's set some 150 years or something after the first one the idea being that apparently in the backstory he was frozen you know turned to stone or something like that yeah for a while um Ah, okay, he's in there, never went to MMO. I will, uh, like, I have to say, I know, I underst I sort of understand why whoever it was, whether it was TSR in those days or whether it was Wizards of the West Coast or whatever, I understand why they, um, well, I sort of understand why they chose to, um, when they brought out the new versions of D and D, why they chose to extend the timeline so much. Excuse me, but it is a little bit annoying that so much time has happened. Okay, Pixel, have a great one. I'll see you later. Thanks for the raid. Yeah, flag and. What happened was when they went from D and D, when they went from D and D two to three, there was really no big time gap between. What they did was they made um, they made that big event, which was basically the start of you know before just before Baldur's Gate one, which was that um, they called it the time of troubles. The gods got kicked out of heaven by some chief god and. They had to make avatars and all this stuff happened. There's actually a whole bunch of books written in the TSR days. There was like, I think, nine books altogether. That, or maybe it was just three. I've read them, though, years and years ago. Um, and it, it was the times of trouble and, and all the stuff that happened. And, and they ended up with a couple of gods actually being killed and a couple of gods being replaced and all that sort of stuff. But then when they went from 3 to 3.5, they didn't really do anything. But when they went from 3.5 to 4, they jumped a number of years into the future. And then when they went from 4 to 5, they jumped another again. So there's like, yeah, whether it's 150, 200 years or something like that, difference between Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, which was 3 and 3.5 rules, and Neverwinter Nights 1, which was 3.5 rules, to what is now going to be Baldur's Gate 3, and in some ways, it's a little bit annoying that they jumped that far forward because, you know, I read a lot of the, of the books that came out in the 90s with all the stories from Forgotten Realms. And now, you know, a, apart from the high-level spellcasters, the elves and a few other special cases, you know, most of those characters that I've read about are now dead and will never be around anymore. Um, well, I think the spell plague was the, the different was from when they went from 3.5 to four. Um, well, yeah, Elminster and Dritz are fine, but you know, there are a lot of other, a lot of other interesting characters around uh, one of the characters that I used to have a lot of the novels about was Dritz. Um, but it started getting a bit... Um, a bit over the top. There was just so many novels about him. And, and I know... I sort of I sort of have seen some of the stuff that has been happening since then. Uh, I've, I've read some stuff, but... Um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm really that much into him anymore. So much stuff has happened. I'm not sure I want to click these switches. You know? Yeah, but when you say the Dritz books, of the 30 plus books that have been written, how many have you actually read? <laughs> you know, because I've read all of the... Let's see... All of the, um, what was that? That first series with the the crystal, the crystal shard ones. 
I've read those three. Then there's um, the three in Menza Baranzan and where he grows up and, and then leaves and lives in the Underdark for a while and then comes uh, out to there. Then there's three more um, where... Um, there's three more stories then outside of the Crystal Shard ones where they go and find Mithril Hall. Um... I, I've lost count of how many Forgotten Realms books I used to have um, and how many of the Dritz ones I've got and read. Uh, really, seriously. I don't read... I don't read paperbacks anymore either. I, I buy them all uh, as e-books. But I, 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 I had them all. I've thrown most of them away um, because I wasn't reading them anymore. But there is a lot. Um... There was a. I, I've got some from the Moonshays. I've got. Um, I've, I've got some from. Um, from the Dale Lands. There's a bunch of stories I I had there. There was. Um, yeah, just so much stuff. I haven't read any of the ones with Jarl Axel and Artemis. I know a little bit about that by looking on Wikipedia and sort of looking at the current history of, of Dritz and where things have gone, but I haven't read any of those. Okay, regular switch. Worn switch. Maybe that's the clue. The ma the, the, they told us not to use regular switches and then there's an ominous switch. And a warm... Is that warm or warm? That's warm. Rot-covered switch. Unlocked switch. Exotic switch. Frosty switch. Razors switch. There's really no clues to be had anywhere. There's no messages. Wasn't any signs out here that I missed. Hmm. I don't know. I, I've never been a huge fan of puzzles in games like this. Careful. I spotted a this place is unbearable. And that that annoys me in these games. Right? Like, look out, I've just seen a trap, and then everyone runs over it. Why doesn't it pause? Now, that's the problem I have with this engine. There is no pause outside of combat. Um... I don't want to move too far from here because we all need to heal now. Yeah, I don't know how a switch can be exotic either. Back of my penis. I feel better already. Oh, of course you do. Okay. No, you're supposed to be doing that. Back on my feet again.
quick save. Just hoping there are some clues somewhere. Okay, hard shelled crabs isn't quite the clue I was looking for. And what are they? Skeletons behind us. Pirate bowmen. Is it just the two of them? Okay. Let's. Can I get everyone in that? Oh, I pretty much can. Okay, let's get you guys first. There we go. Buff up. been crippled. And knocked down. Knock him down, please. Okay. Oil him up then. Seven, have mercy on your soul. Soul sapped. Ouch. this. Uh, no. This. He's decided to get up, has he? What are you talking about? You are the healer. Uh, 
that, I'll give you a hand. Hey, thanks for the follow, Spooky. Um, let's knock, try and knock him down again. Let's use a fire arrow first, I think. Okay, and now we need to resurrect. Yeah, I am spooky. I'm enjoying this. Um, I mean, there's a few little glitchy things that are a pain in the butt, but generally speaking, I'm enjoying this game. Oh, we're still in combat. How are we still in combat? What else? What the hell is that? A pirate boomer. Right, um, how about you throw an oil grenade? A little grease can slow down all the foes. No, I bought both, but I refused to, I wanted to play this first and then the other one, so... Try poisoning him. Okay. Finally finish the combat. Couple more crab claws. I don't know what we're going to do with them. You really need to heal yourself. You can do that. That's fine. Let's just give those. Good night, Flag and Dawn. Thanks for for um, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be going for, though. We'll see. Uh, what are we doing? You are healing people. As good as a new pin. way to go. That's something weird in the sand over there.
that's taking us back to where we came from so hang on Oh yes, yeah, so that that way goes back to where we came from. Let's just quickly go along there. Okay, we've already done empty barrels on that. Right. So Yeah, and we came down this way. So we've done sort of covered everything in this area that we can do, have we? Uh, we didn't grab that crate. Oh, and there's another switch over here. What's that one? Borrowed switch. this rat has to say about things. I didn't... I did not mean to click that. I've always been curious about the exotic lever. Where does it lead? The tropical isle? A dusty western village? Perhaps to the hall of echoes itself? Okay, so... I just got poisoned and almost killed by the rot-covered lever. The ominous switch sounds even worse. more barrels and stuff down this way that we didn't check out before. I'm wondering if we're supposed to be putting barrels on top of these switches. Okay. I don't know what happened there. I think that... Was that a... Is that a trap underneath the barrel? Maybe? Is that what happened there? What about any of these? Do we have the same thing happen when we move these? So if I put that on top of the worn sw switch... I must say that this is the least enjoyable part of this for me. These puzzles with no clues, no... You know, ominous switch, that doesn't sound right. Worn switch, I don't want to use. But I don't know whether it's the switch that's causing the problem. Okay, that... 
So there's just something about that box. You move it, it blows up, you die. Um, right, that just seems so surreal. Let's just do it. Let's just experiment and see what happens when we push each of the buttons. So we know that this one, the rock covered switch gives you disease and almost kills you. Okay. So that teleports us somewhere. Where is that little mouse? I want to click on him and talk to him, that little rat. Damn it, he got away. Really wish it wasn't so hard. talk. You've got this ability to talk to the animals and then they make it so goddamn hard to do. Because there's no way to pause. See? And even escape doesn't do anything. At least the sound doesn't change. Where is he? There he is. Come on. Okay, so Oh a healing potion and a parchment. What does the parchment say? Fie, I fear this missive may be the last evidence of my existence. Fool I was to come seeking the blasted bloodstone. Why I thought I could manage to snag it before Pontius snagged me and left me to dangle in the breeze as my greatest and final mistake. Worst of all, I worry that I simply lack some insight or relic that might save me from this inglorious demise. Surely there must be a way off this bloody precipice, but since I am too great a fool to find it, I bid fair I bid fair Rivalon farewell and await my turn to enter the Hall of Echoes. Okay. Throwing that to you, we're putting that in there. Actually, I probably shouldn't have put that in there. Because I think I want to sell some of this stuff. Anyway. Um, so he's saying in the bushes people go poof. something interesting a mysterious switch ah we're back here okay I already picked up the cove, the cove harbour key. All of this time I thought I, I couldn't go through that door yet. And I could. Farmer's Scythe. I think that's probably a better weapon than what she's currently got, sad to say. It is. 
Well, it doesn't have the poison damage on it, but we can apply that at some point. Careful now, that's a trap. Don't like that that's continuing to click all the time. Is there, there is a pressure plate there. What about you? Can you throw that that far? You can. How about you put another one next to it? Oh! That wasn't fun. Careful, I've spotted a trap. Look at all those insane traps down there. Just absolutely everywhere. Save. Uh oh. Oil everywhere. Not good. What's the signpost say? Hells of fire surround you. Turn back or suffer. Really? You're going to make it this easy for me? Right, next. Let's just save before I do this, because this could blow up the entire place.
starts again. Wow, my weapons, I didn't realise my weapon was starting to get degraded. I keep forgetting to, to pay, pay attention to that. Got a feeling if I try and move one of these items from here, it's probably not going to work. Teleportation scroll. Where did the teleportation scroll go to? Let's do a gamble. Let's do a quick save. Can we throw this far enough? Is the question. We can. Careful now, that's a trap. You think? That's a trap as well. God. What was in that crate?
damn it. We all still got poisoned. My heart beats too slowly to sustain me. Uh. Great, and then I died. I'm not happy with that. gotta do all that again. Okay. Yeah, we do. Let's get both of these out. So it's a little bit easier. Opening up this. Come on, where is it? Grabbing that. Throwing it back to there. Use that. Brilliant. Let's pick that back up. I've got my eyes on the prize. Let's move to there. Can we throw that just a little bit further? We can. Beautiful. No danger. that. Lucky five. No, we already know what it is. to make some more arrows. Where's the where's the logs? I don't see them. But it did give me those. Is it that and that? To give me stakes, there we go. And then if I use the stake with that, I get a couple of arrows. Yeah, okay. more 
guys I can make here. Poison cloud. And we're done. Okay. Um, let's just get those arrows out of here. We'll do something with that while we can. Uh, one point available. Let's keep going strength. And you've got two points here. I don't think it's going to be enough to do anything that we really want. Nothing in three-handed. Nothing there. Nothing there. We'll just leave those. Well, didn't actually mean to do that, but anyway. The body stirs. The subtle slouch in its decayed shoulders suggest intense longing. A large, soggy chunk of flesh falls to the ship's floor with a melancholic thud. So this is what's to become of me, it seems to moan. A body with no head, a ship with no captain. Dejectedly, it proffers a hand. In its palm is a well-weathered notebook only slightly sticky with rotted corpse ooze. You accept it taking it by its spine with two ginger fingers. Your efforts at not gagging are most valiant. The bereft corpse turns from you just slightly, as if you imply it didn't want to talk to you anyway. Okay. Uh, next diary. 12 Adventurous Nick he rasps his voice thick as corpse if you know sing to me another peaceful fishing village ransacked scorched to dust by a pot of scorch machine didn't sign up for the slaughter of youths and babes I'm an entertainer I work for gold not bloodlust I can stand no longer I must confront him before all semblance of salent he is lost I've heard of his taking an ear or a nose from those who defy him but those were only rumours of my what might he take from me if my words displease him? Several blank pages intervene between the last entry in a series of crude letters cascaded down the page that seem to spell out dead. Or is that a H at the beginning? Maybe it's just a really poorly done pictograph of a crab. Ah ha ha, very funny. Okay. Let's put these guys back in here, I think. So we've found the Waypoint Shrine. This is Derelict Harbour. I'm going to go back to Northgate because I need to repair my weapons. And I'm not entirely sure I remember how to do this. We also need to find somewhere to rest. But let's head to the little crafting area. See what we can find.
I've got a repair hammer. That's what I should obviously be using. Let's get that out. Now, do you click on this to use that on, say, that? Object repaired. Is that the same bell it was? I guess so. Guessing we might have to take the items off first to repair them. That's in, two, in okay shape. We'll repair that. Need to repair that. And that's okay. So let's have a look. stuff doing for repair. Yep, that could use a repair. That could definitely use a repair. Might as well do that. And that. That's fine. Just right click and go repair. Can't do that, you can even do it when it's on. Okay, I know we certainly haven't finished by any means. But I'm thinking this is probably a good place to leave it. So I'll just take a couple of seconds to heal everybody up. The rest of us are all very close to levels too, I think. Yep. Okay, well, I'm going to 
call it here. This is going to be the end of the stream. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Thank you, everyone who followed. Thanks for the raid, Pixelette. Conman, thanks for subscribing again. Uh, and yeah, I will catch you all in the next stream. Thanks a lot. Bye.